studio. Okay, this uh, little video is about density dependent and independent factors, which are the two, I think, most poorly <coughs> defined terms in ecology by students. I, you know, generally the staff know what they're doing. Students not so much. Um, you do need to learn those and I can recommend again to you Quizlet for proper definitions. And I think the uh, primary cause of getting it wrong is to get the cause and effect the wrong way round. So, I'm not going to do the wrong way round, I'm just going to do the right way round so that you kind of get it. So, these are both factors that uh, regulate population numbers. So if you think about um, a population, it's on the increase, so you've got more individuals in your population and they are all competing for the same food source. Obviously the more of them you have, the more competition there is and the less uh, food they get each. That increase in population causing an increase in competition means that that factor is a density dependent one. So a density dependent factor affects more individuals in a population the higher the population is. For example and so you need, you need to be able to explain some of these examples for um, AO2 explanations. So, for example, the higher the population, the more competition, There is for food. Therefore, more individuals get less food. And die or don't reproduce. We've also got things like um, disease or parasites and these are more easily transmitted. dense populations and all of those things cause less reproductive success and the less births you have obviously then the population goes down and then that factor becomes less important and the population goes back up again then it becomes more important and the population goes down etc so that's what causes that sort of wobble around the carrying capacity so, density independent factors
perfect populations. This is the one that people tend not to get wrong. Irrespective of population size. So if you think back a couple of years to uh, the floods, so flooding affected populations of rare animals, where there's not many of them, and common animals where the population is really high equally. So things that can affect um, populations like that, flooding obviously, uh, forest fires, uh, you've got uh, temperature decreases, So dramatic temperature change can affect a population, um, might be a pH change, pollution event, you know, like an oil spill. So if you were in the Gulf of Mexico when um, BP spilt a load of oil in it and you were looking at a population, you could have a population that was doing that very high numbers and it would suddenly crash or you could have a population that had very low numbers and that would suddenly crash as well after the uh, dramatic oil spill event. Do pick an appropriate one so for example you know if you've got uh, a liquid culture of something like a bacterium or daphnia flooding is not appropriate you know because they're living in water and uh, fire equally not quite appropriate but it could be a temperature change or a pH or a pollution event uh, so do have a little think about your scenario if you're given one before you launch into an answer and just put oh I know this one this one's fire <laughs> <laughs>